yesterday I saw once upon a mattress and then I came home and I ate an entire burrito. Welcome back to my channel. That was the weirdest way to start off this video. But any hoodle, this is uh, another part to monkey. Woo, this isn't necessarily going on the monkeys playlist because I don't think they mentioned the monkeys in this Wikipedia article or Wikipedia thing or whatever. But um, I still wanted to talk about this. Nick Magazine is a defunct American children's magazine inspired by the children's television network Nickelodeon. It's for saying... <laughs> Its first incarnation appeared in 1990 and was distributed by at participating Pizza Hut restaurants. The version of the magazine only saw two issues. The magazine returned in summer 1993 with all types of content, primarily humor and comics. Originally published on a quarterly basis, it switched to bi-monthly with the February March 1994 issue. It then went to 10 times per year starting in March 1995 with a bi-annual December slash January and June slash July issue until its end in 2009. For most of its run, its magazine's um, editor-in-chief was was Laura Galen. She wrote the goodbye message for the 159th and the final issue in 2009. On February 5th, 2015, Paper Cuts announced that they, were, they worked the deal with Nickelodeon to create a new version of the magazine. The first issue was released on June tw um, 2015, and then the final issue was released in 2016. Yeah, it really didn't have a long run. Before we get into everything else, I'd like to briefly mention that in 1990, R.L. Stein was the editor for Nick Magazine, so... Thank you, thank you. Pizza Hut and R.L. Stein? Cinema. In spite of being related to the network it was named after, Nickelodeon Magazine covered many sorts of topics, not just what was on the network. The magazine contained informative non-fiction pieces, humor, interviews, comics, pranks, and recipes like green slime cake. The magazine's mascot was Zelda Van Gutters, a Lakeland Terrier dog who appeared throughout the magazine with sarcastic asides on the articles. She was also the star of the magazine's semi-regular photo comic flip, Roughin' It. Other contributors included Dan Aboto, John Akursko, Bill I Alger, I'm probably butchering half of these, I'm sorry, Graham, Annabelle, Ian Baker, Tom Bunk, Martin Sandretta, Greg Cook, Dave Cooper, Jordan Crane, Mark Crilly, Scott Cunningham, Vincent DePorter, <laughs> Stefan uh, DeStefano, yeah, that guy sounds familiar. Anyways, Evan Dorkin, Brent Engstrom, Fego, uh, Felipe Galindo, uh, Gary Fields, Emily Flake, Ellen Forney, Fraud, these are a lot of names. In addition, Nick's Magazine's comic books also feature comics from characters of the network's programming, which normally appear just before a season premiere or a special film event for the property or on the actual series. Among the shows featured in the comic books were Our Real Monsters, The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, The Angry Beavers, As Told by Ginger, Avatar the Last Airbender, Cat Dog, Cat Scratch, Chalk Zone, Danny Phantom, LT Grade, The Fairly Odd Parents, Hey Arnold, Invader Zim, Kablam, Mr. Meaty, My Life is a Teenage Robot, Rocket Power, Rugrats, and All Grown Up, SpongeBob SquarePants, The Mighty Bee, Run and Snippy, The Wild Thorn and the X's. <laughs> Woo! So Nickelodeon Comics, formerly titled Nickelodeon Magazine Presents, was a series of one-shot special issues put out by Nick Magazine. Each issue tied in with a comic. Uh, Nickelodeon Comics mainly contained comics, either newly made stories or two-page shorts we printed from Nick Magazine, but it also featured articles, puzzles, and poster inserts. We'd probably be here all day if I read every single one of these. So I'm going to send it over instead to my man Walter, who will read all of it for me. Fiona of the Felines by Terry Laban, a girl who is raised by cats. Her strips are occasionally accompanied by a similar strip title Warren of the Worms, Grandpa and Julie, Shark Hunters by Jeff Checkarge. This strip's titular duo consists of a blonde-haired girl and her dim-witted grandfather started out searching for Stephen, the largest shark in the world. Their adventures from 1999 to 2003 have recently been reprinted in a graphic novel and a television pilot for an animated series was made by Klasky Chupo, Impy and Wormer by James Kochulka. These many strips, featured at the bottom of the comic pages, under the regular strips, starred a bug who does never speak proper English and constantly bothers a comparatively intellectual worm. Juanito and Clem by Craig Thompson, 
whimsical tales of an adventurous young girl named Juanita and her less brave green friend named Clem. Carmopolis by Nick Bertozzi, an adventure strip in a world where everyone and everything is on wheels. Mervyn the Magnificent <coughs> Mervyn the Magnificent by Richard Saller, a bumbling magician named Mervyn solves crime with his rabbit sidekick. Patty Cake by Scott Roberts, a bossy blonde-haired young lady with a flower in her hair. Sam Hill and Rainine by Mark Martin, a boy and his robot dog. Seen but not heard by Sam Henderson, the going-ons of a pink man and a bear, who compulsively pull pranks on each other. As the strip's name suggests, the comic is made entirely of pictures with no dialogue or sound effects. In the magazine's 10th anniversary issue, there was a blooper strip where the man and bear are talking. Also, there is an advertisement for a seen but not heard musical in Grandpa and Julie comic. Southern Fried Fugitives by Simon and Kim Deitch, the continuing adventures of a quartet of fried chicken pieces brought to life by a thunderstorm. This strip ended in December 1999. Teeny Weeny, the tiniest hot dog in the world by Mark Martin, 2005, a miniature, but enthusiastic, hot dog. The Gag Station by Various. One-panel gags, often featuring cartoonists such as Johnny Ryan, Mark Newgarden, Ellen Forney, Steve Wiesman, Felipe Galindo, Ian Baker, and Mark Martin. The Uncredibly Confabulated Tales of Lucinda Ziggles by Andy Ristino, a young girl gets involved in fantastic adventures that no one ever believes. Twiggy Stumps, Outdoor Adventurist by Brian Ralph, a flaky outdoorsman and his wise-cracking skunk pal. Juniper. Underpants on His Head Man by Michael Kupperman, originally appeared as one of the worst comic book superheroes ever. As his name suggests, he wears his underwear on his head. His archenemy is his co-worker, Pants on His Head Man. And now, on to our final comic yam by Corey Barber, a wordless comic starring a toddler with jet backpack, wearing a hoodie, in a whimsical world that features human-like cats, pet TVs and other fantasy elements. So there was a British version of the magazine that was published from January, not January, February 16th of 2011 as a collaboration between Nickelodeon and DC Thompson and Co. Um, it was discontinued as of June of 2012, according to Wikipedia. I have no idea where it is. Probably lost media for all I know. <laughs> Viacom ended operations of the magazine on June 2009, though the last issue was published in December of that year, due to economic conditions and the continual move of the network's content to their website. Digital stuff. The title continued to publish until a December-January 2010 issue, and the final issue featured an editorial from magazine SPV editorial director Laura Galen thanking the magazine's readers. On February 5th of 2015, Paper Cuts announced that they had worked the deal with Nickelodeon to revive the magazine. The new version was released on June 2015 and ended in 2016. The Nickelodeon series represented were Breadwinners, Sanjay and Craig, Pig Go, Banana Cricket, Harvey Beaks, and The Loud House. Looking back... That's Loki kind of sad, man. That's that's Loki kind of sad. That it just ended. What's Eureka's castle? I'm sorry, I got distracted. I'm looking at um an interview that R.L. Stein did about um something else. I think he's talking about some sort. Of, is it? It's a kids show. Um, four oh four left found. Okay, I guess I'll never know. Um, thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video where. I decided to combine these together to get over with. Um, the next video, I'm talking about the Osmonds and the Jackson 5 because they both got cartoons. And well, I need to know if it was bad like the Beatles cartoon or if it's good. Spoiler alert, the answer's probably the first one. <laughs>